What's going on, everybody? Josh Calloway here, SI Sooner, joined alongside by John Hoover, Ryan Chapman at Gaylord Family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium, where the Sooners are getting ready for Bedlam. It's a big week in the state of Oklahoma. Everybody knows that. And this year, even bigger because the Sooners and the Cowboys both coming in 10 and 1. Oklahoma needs a win to punch a ticket to the Big 12 championship game the following week against what would be the very same Cowboys team. That's certainly an interesting wrinkle added to this year's game. Injury update off the top here. Looks like Andrew Rame is going to be back, which was, I think, somewhat surprising. Injury looked kind of rough the other day. Lincoln Riley said he expects him to play this weekend. DJ Graham, meanwhile, on the other side of the football, a little more shaky. He's kind of questionable, I believe is how Lincoln Riley phrased that. So if he's not going to be able to play, that's certainly a, a significant loss because between Keith Lawrence, Woody Washington, DJ Graham, that's kind of your three reliable cornerbacks, which Alex Grant talked about today. He really likes to have at least three, so something to keep an eye on there. Now, like I said, this game, Oklahoma needs to win to punch their ticket to the Big 12 Championship game. Oh, excuse me, while they're already in, the Sooners could theoretically get in with a, even with a loss if Baylor loses. But who, you asked Lincoln Ryland, he said, you can't worry about that. It has to be full send just trying to win our game and let the chips fall where they may. Yeah, he said it's a very unique situation or has the potential to be a unique situation with playing back-to-back -back weeks. Right. If Baylor wins, sorry, if Baylor loses earlier in the day or Oklahoma beats Baylor, OSU in Bedlam. Now, that's the weird thing. That's the thing I asked about was how do you prepare for this game? And I know the answer is, is an easy, well, we prepare to win every game. We prepare the same to win every game. That's mm -hmm. the answer. But the reality is there's a game Saturday morning before, hours before Oklahoma takes the field against Oklahoma State. The outcome of that game could very well determine whether Oklahoma is going to be in the Big 12 championship or has to win to be in the Big 12 championship. There's two different things. So there's right. a little bit of a dynamic at play there that I think, you know, I asked a couple of players about, and they're both the, the players that I asked were like, yeah, this is going to be kind of weird. We're not going right. to obsess about Baylor and Texas Tech, but we are going to keep up with the score. We are going to watch that game. We are going to make sure we know what the situation is before we kick off. I think that's the sentiment here, but it's a bizarre situation, especially with Peppered behind it. You've got the fact that they could play again next week. And right. how do you prepare? And what's the mental preparation? And, you know, hey, we're going to unload the playbook. Well, we might want to hold something back. The whole dynamic is just – it's crazy. It's psycho. It's college football in 2021. Yeah, absolutely. And, obviously, Oklahoma's still in the playoff race and all that. So it's not like you would not be going full send to win this game. But, like you said, if Baylor loses – the Sooners go into Saturday night knowing that they play Oklahoma State next week. No ifs, fans or buts. They know it's a done deal. So that kind of mental gymnastics is going to be really weird to see how it plays out on Saturday. going to be a fun day. Now, Ryan, obviously another big part of the conversation today, first Bedlam experience for Caleb Williams. He's been so-so, obviously, the last couple of weeks. Saturday wasn't – you know, the huge step up you wanted after Baylor, but he avoided, you know, big glaring mistakes other than the one interception. He needs to probably be a whole lot better, though, if they're going to find a way to win this one. Yeah, for sure. And Lincoln Riley, not that anyone is shocked by this, but he still has a ton of faith in his quarterback, he said today. Right. But basically, as far as Caleb Williams goes, Lincoln Riley said – the, those spectacular plays, those four or five times a game that he just does something that you stand there and go, wow, like that's going to happen mm -hmm. regardless. What Caleb Williams has to shore up is everything else. He needs to find some level of consistency, Lincoln Riley said, on those other plays. Just take what the defense has given him because Lincoln said – Lincoln tallied up and said there have been – 400-ish yards, he said, of, of total offense that have been left over the table since Caleb Williams has been inserted in of just being a few inches off here or there, miscommunication, stuff like that. So Lincoln Riley believes the plays are there. Caleb Williams just has to find some level of consistency. Now, what I asked him is I was curious – after this game against Iowa State on Saturday, he said that he was sometimes a little too patient in trying to let receivers get open instead of just tucking and running. So I was trying to figure out, is that an adjustment you can make in one week, or do you need to put in some other plays, kind of like the Jalen Hurts offense, of one read, not there, tuck it and run. Lincoln's pretty confident that Caleb will be able to make those adjustments right. week to week. So that's something he's going to have to do this weekend because they're going to need Caleb Williams' legs to be a big factor if they're going to have any hope of even moving the ball against his Oklahoma State defense. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you need that. And also, I mean, it just doesn't feel like you can throw for under 100 yards and expect to win this one like you did on Saturday against Iowa State. Now, again, a big part of that is because this OSU defense is unequivocally one of the best in college football. Jim Knowles has done an unbelievable job. He's a finalist for the Broyles Award, presented annually to the best assistant coach in college football. And, Hoove, you had a great point, and you asked Lincoln and all the players today just kind of building up to this. Honestly, you had Baylor, tall task. 
a tall task. Iowa State, a really big test. And now here's your biggest one, kind of just gearing up and being prepared for this because of what you've played the last couple of weeks. Yeah, when, when Oklahoma played Baylor, it was the hardest hitting, most talented, most aggressive defense that they faced all year. When Oklahoma yeah. played Iowa State, it was the most talented, hardest hitting, most aggressive defense that they faced all year. When Oklahoma plays Oklahoma State, guess what? Most aggressive, most talented, most hard hitting defense there will have faced all year. So it's great. Right. The schedule worked out. And I got a couple players to say this as well. The schedule worked out perfect where you could step up, step up, step up to get to the season finale against what you said is, is true. Literally one of the best defenses, top two or three defenses in all of college yeah. football. So this is a team that's going to hit you. They're going to swarm you. They're going to disguise things. They're going to cover you. Uh, Oklahoma is going to have to come up with a plan. They're going to have to be efficient. They're going to have to be effective and dynamic. They're also going to have to be patient. Uh, because th what they what they saw two weeks ago at Baylor, it's going to be worse than that. What they saw this week, this mm -hmm. past week against Iowa State, it's going to be worse than that. That's how good Oklahoma State is. Absolutely, this defense is nasty. It just doesn't give up points. Just flat doesn't give up points. Um, you know, last four weeks or so, literally just I think it's like one touchdown from the starters. Zero, Zero touchdowns, Zero from, touchdowns the starters. from the starters. Yeah. And four, there you go. In six, fifteen quarters. Yeah, uh, unbelievable it's stuff. Ridiculous. What they're doing right now. Just Texas Tech was just. They didn't know what to do Saturday uh, in that matchup with the Pokes. So certainly a tall task here for Oklahoma. They're going to find a way to get some points on the board. Now, for the Oklahoma defense, they're going to get an OSU offense that is very run heavy. Spencer Sanders, obviously been the quarterback there in Oklahoma State for a while now. You know, kind of a polarizing figure. People kind of love to you know say he's nothing special. He's just kind of a game manager. One, whatever you want to slice it, he's playing the best he's ever played right now, and the Sooners need to play well and maybe try to force him into some mistakes if they're going to win this game. Yeah, there are a lot of questions asked about Spencer Sanders today because it's an interesting dynamic for him as well. I believe Jenny Carlson was the one who pointed it out that, point. yeah. that really this is his first Bedlam experience as well. He was injured two years ago, got knocked out of the game on this field last year, so he's going to have to come in. Mm -hmm. He's a guy, like you said, Josh, playing the best football of his career. So was Brock Purdy a week ago. So was Gary Bohannon two weeks ago. Mixed results there. Right. Um, obviously, the Sooners on this field got to Brock Purdy seven times, able to kind of eliminate that. Here's the thing that Gary Bohannon had that Brock Purdy didn't, and that's two legs that can extend plays at a really high level. Spencer Sanders is that guy. So if he's not going to turn the ball over, he, he, if he can just continue to move down the field, extend plays with his legs, it could be a long day for the Oklahoma defense. So yeah. uh, this is one of those scenarios where Oklahoma State's offensive line much improved, but it's still by no means not like the most talented unit in the country. There are a bunch of guys who have found a way to get it done. Can the Oklahoma defense, much like they did last week against a similar unit in Iowa State, Oklahoma State's offensive line better than Iowa State, but similar in that talent level, not necessarily elite, but a bunch of guys working together. Can Oklahoma's defense t start to poke some holes up yeah. front? That'll have to be the key because if you can get to Spencer Sanders, he'll throw it right to you. Very similar to Brock Purdy, but he hasn't done that a lot this year, mainly because the protection's been great. Yeah, got to find a way to force him into some turnovers, it definitely feels like. And it's a great point from you who have also kind of talking about the player. You know, we talked to Isaiah Thomas and Pat Fields today. Just this, all the talks about Oklahoma State's defense, OU's defense kind of matching that. And Lincoln Riley talked about that, saying, well, our players go against a pretty darn good defense in practice every week, too. So kind of that, these, these Bedlam games are always known for shootouts. It seems like this year it's going to be all about the defenses, which is a, a quite the switch around from just a few years ago. All right, guys, can't wait. It's going to be insane at T-Boom Pickens Stadium on Saturday in Stillwater. Mike Gundy said himself this week, very quiet, possibly the last Bedlam game in Stillwater for who knows how long. I think we're all expecting it to just be a madhouse in there on Saturday night. Going to be a whole lot of fun. AllSooners.com, the place to be. Everything is there that you could want. Preview coverage of Bedlam, including everything that we got to hear today from Lincoln Riley, Alice Grinch, and the three players on this uh, Thanksgiving week. Just that, just those guys. No players tomorrow or anything. So everything you can want, it's there already. AllSooners.com. Keep up with our podcast, of course, as well. We're going to record that right after this. It'll be ready for you Wednesday morning, previewing Bedlam on Saturday in Stillwater. That's it for now. Till next time, in Stillwater Saturday night, I'm Josh Calloway, alongside Ryan Chapman and John Hoover.